So it's been almost a year since the Galaxy S9 was introduced. A device that set the trend last year and will set the stage up for the Galaxy S10, which we'll see in a couple of weeks. But before we get into all that, let's take a look back at the history of where the Galaxy S line actually started. Allow me to introduce in alphabetical order the Samsung Galaxy S. So this is the uh, five camera, camera, which is capable of 720p. What you see, you can do a bunch of live movies. I just got the Mario one, so I'm just going to set that one Um, of course, this is running TouchWiz 4.0. One second. As a lot of these charge, you can see there's no LED notification telling us charge. You to have your um, date, weather, oh, the camera. Um, and of course, that's the uh, sensor there in front, so details. So it's blocking my way. I can just move the video around. So of course, you have the white and you have the black. And actually, you can tell the difference in the feel of the back. This feels a little expanded. Um, ability to turn it on and off uh, your settings. So you do have expanded settings. You have to use the standard uh, internet browser. And in the standard browser here, um, you can actually go in. So I finally got a Galaxy S5. And okay, just like this video is in 4K. That's the seal there for the, and our back row actually. Layout looks a little bit different, to more refined, more fresh. It's got built-in VDIS in the so you can actually pull that edge screen uh, from any point. It really feels good in your hands. So when you hold it, you really feel like you have white balance and things like that. But you do have, of course, a collage of black device on the S line. You have a few thousand milliamp battery and trust payments. But in terms of look, well, not much other than the plus ride into the S7. And you see that basically as a user, your devices are Samsung has packed in a lot. And I think a lot of people on our wallpapers follow me on Pinterest to find them all. So also the highs too can drown out just a little bit. But now that fingerprint sensor location is up to get to view more on each small device. The footprint is smaller. But so the first thing you realize while watching all those clips is that my video quality back then was atrocious. I apologize for that. But you also know that my wallpaper game was still strong back then. So if you need any of the wallpapers that you see, at least from the current devices, let me know and you can use my Pinterest link to actually check them out. But the Galaxy S line has taken quite a journey over the years to get to where we are with the S9 and moving forward with the Galaxy S10. We saw the very first Galaxy device basically had multiple names and multiple carriers because Samsung, they have a foothold and it was a little clunky. TouchWiz was slow back then and it's something that has changed over time. The Galaxy S3 brought more stability and also some really cool features into the device uh, with the Galaxy S4 bringing things like uh, pausing while looking away a lot of the air gesture features that are now tucked away in your Galaxy device, but something that Samsung set standard, including multitasking, which came from nowhere else than other than a Galaxy S device. That was actually pretty cool. Then you also have the fact that gaming was improved with the Galaxy uh, um, S4 devices, and we had that full letter back with the Galaxy S5. They all had removable batteries. The Galaxy S6, 7, and 8 introduced, or 6 and 7, introduced the edge screen displays and now that was finalized with the Galaxy S8, which was more of a standard device and I felt that at that encapsulated the finalization of that design, if you will. The S9, which we are talking about now in this video, is one that really brought everything together. The edge screen was much more compact, didn't feel too clunky with this device. You also have a device that's really snappy with the Snapdragon 845 processor, which pretty much killed it last year in 2018, and also enough RAM to basically do all your activities. So while gaming on this device, it was no issue. You really were able to just go through, play your games, and really enjoy it with the Galaxy S9. Now, the S9 really showcased where Samsung had brought the S line from, especially the fact that you had a device that had, gone, had done away with all those issues of slowdowns. That's one of the biggest issues with the Galaxy S line in the past is that most people complain that by the time you spent five to six months with this device, it started to slow down. And some of those uh, it, rumors persist, but that's not true with the S9. This is almost a year after. I picked it up, I used it for about two weeks. It is smooth, it is fast, it is very 
very responsive. And I like that. And I'm still using the regular UI that's on there right now. Now, some people have, were able to upgrade to uh, One UI, which is the latest UI. And here's what it looks like on the Galaxy Note. It's gonna look the same way in your S9, uh, when, if and when you pick it up. Smooth is faster, greater for one hand control, and gives you just better performance all around. Now, the S9 also has a solid camera. This is something that we have shown and you can quite, you can see quite easily with this device. Now we did a video with my buddy Manu Ansel, who's a professional photographer and we do this camera video with him. And just the performance of this device is something he liked. And definitely check out that video. We want to spend more time to see how good that camera is. Now that's the rear camera. The front facing camera on the other hand, Samsung, you need to do more work on that because I am not a big fan of it. It can be much better and it should be much better. So hopefully, with the Galaxy S10, we'll see that. Battery life on the S9 Plus was really good, which is the device I used. The S9 was okay, it was good, but battery performance the S9 Plus was really solid. So the things that you want in a smartphone, the S9 and S9 Plus have done that well, especially in the last year. And I think for what the price of the device is right now, this is a solid pickup. Now there are many devices like the OnePlus uh, devices from you know Huawei or Honor that could fit that budget bill, but really, the S9 and the S9 Plus really are smack in the middle of where it is right now. At around 550 bucks, you really can't go wrong picking this device up. If you're looking for something right now to pick up. Now, yes, there are a few things I would like to change, but I do like the fact that they still have a headphone jack. It means I can use the headphones behind me to actually listen to my music. All the AKG headphones that are actually talked into this device, which is great, which means you don't have to spend more money just because they try to force you into wireless, USB Type-C charging. You know, the lifestyle features are there, water resistance, uh, fast wireless charging. There are a lot of things in there for about 550 bucks that those other devices in the mid-range, at least right now, cannot. But what can we expect moving forward from the Galaxy S9 to the Galaxy S10. We've seen the leaks, we've, seen, we've heard the rumors, there are a lot of things, there are many variants. We know 5G is coming, and we know it's gonna be powered by the Snapdragon 855 processor, which is supposed to give us 40% performance more boost in terms of processing power, which is huge, which means gaming that I really enjoyed on the S9, which is really good and smooth, will be 10 times better, at least I'm just saying 10 times, but it'll be much better on the Galaxy S10. Also, we don't have a notch, we have thinner bezels. We've got the hole punch, which some people might not like, but as we've seen on the view, 20, this is something that actually represents a smaller uh, footprint on your display. So that's something nice to see. And when we get our hands on the S10, you, you'll see, we'll do a video for you on gaming entertainment. So you can clearly see how that looks. We know that that device will also have a fingerprint sensor in a different location. It's supposed to be something where when you put your hands in your pocket, you can basically just touch the screen anywhere on the screen and it will unlock the device for you. So that would be nice to see. And it'll be interesting to see how well that works for users. I think there's a lot of things that we're gonna see with the S10 moving away from the S9 that shows that the S line, the Galaxy S line, has grown over the years. And I think as, as users, this is something that we expect to see. Well, hopefully the front facing camera with the hole punch or the double hole punch with the plus line will be fantastic. And we hope the triple camera setup will, will put Samsung back in that uh, top two, top three placement of smartphone cameras. Because yes, they've kind of lost out to Apple, Huawei, and you know Google with the Pixel in the last, in the last year. So there are a lot of things to see, but if you are waiting for the Galaxy S10, then there's a lot of promise down that road with the Galaxy S10. But if you can't wait, the Galaxy S9 is a solid device to definitely pick up and worth picking up, especially at this point in time. So if you have any questions or any comments, guys, let me know. I'll try to answer them for you. I'll tell you what I've used the device for, how we can use it. Definitely check out all the videos uh, that you've seen here uh, about the camera, some of the gaming videos, and even the old ones, I will have links for them for you guys down below. Because of course, I like to look at how badly uh, my videos were back in the day. And any of the wallpapers, uh, use our Pinterest link, you'll find them down there as well. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions again or any comments, let me know. Otherwise, don't forget to like and share this video. Favorite this video, subscribe to the channel, and always enjoy your entertainment.